here. I've uh, arrived from Edinburgh uh, this morning. It's a really nice uh, journey. I know most of you have made it. And I clearly know uh, why I'm here. Do you know why you're here? Uh, <laughs> have you lunch? That's, that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, as you were coming here in the morning, uh, did you ever think about your aims for the day? Uh, anyone with particular hopes in mind? Problems to fix? Any issues to turn to to address? Or is it just to arrive and absorb as much as possible and then think about it later? What you make of it. So today, I will be talking about the former. So, I won't be talking about making learning faster, bigger, accelerated, catching up with the world. No, I'll be talking about zoning yeah. down, sitting down, writing down things, thinking about them, reflecting. Going back to things which happened, confronting them with aspirations, dreams, bit about oneself. I'll be talking about reflection and how it might link to our students' employability, generally about this unique personal student centre approach. And as it happens, we facilitate it through uh, something that's been called portfolio. I'm from the University of Edinburgh, been doing this sort of thing for about 10 years, and uh, we've had <coughs> different departments, different areas of the university, recently I've gone into the Institute of Academic Development. Now I'm based in our newly created IS division called Learning, Teaching and Web, but uh, it's all about focusing on the learner and coming up with new ideas. Very quickly, um, is anyone using ePortfolios, promoting, working with students? Most of you have an idea of the online space where students can collect them. And, uh, and as they were being developed, roughly starting about 10 years ago, uh, people thought that we, we build it, they'll come. Uh, and some of you might have realized that we build it and they're not coming. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a different story than with the PLE, for example, because what you're doing in a PLE sort of already happens in the classroom. Taking it online and enhancing it online. With e-portfolios, with personal learning spaces, we rely heavily on vision for themselves and recording reflections. That doesn't tend to happen in the classroom except maybe for more traditional courses which are um, utilizing these approaches like uh, education or medicine, nursing. And so we really have to ask ourselves, and that's what we keep doing at Edinburgh, how do students focus, how do they see themselves? And uh, so they, they will not see themselves as just e-portfolio users for the sake of it. No, we'll put them through specific activities and then ask them to reflect on these activities and record that reflection. What for? Because uh, just as you take snapshots from holidays and then a year or two years later you come across them, you think, oh, I, I, yeah, I remember what myself from about two years ago in Barcelona. I remember because my plans back there were such and such. And you confront your present with the past, that's how you really learn. So it's, I'm simplifying here uh, quite a lot about how students view reflection, should view, but uh, generally the whole e-portfolio debate, in my opinion, uh, should be focused predominantly on reflection and recording reflection and creating activities or making the most of activities which provide these reflective opportunities. So, as students arrive, or even shortly before, as you ask them why you want to become a candidate for this university or student for this 
but that's what we do. Specific um, schools will create pre-arrival questionnaires. These uh, questionnaires in the past, they would have been filled out on paper and uh, into an archive. Now we're trying to link them with the future portfolio account uh, of what students will, will use so that they can always go back to the first months or even first weeks before they even started to look at what they accomplished themselves or they were hoping to get from their degree. Uh, throughout the study, there's been loads of opportunities uh, for organizing these uh, reflective activities. But there's also placements, there's also things like the projects that students might be involved in and in hope of boosting their employability as they graduate. And uh, so these are roughly the areas on which we, we concentrate. Another big one is personal tutoring. Uh, do, do you have a personal tutor system at the university? Uh, so at Edinburgh, students would have some sort of academic mentor um, who they would meet once per semester, so twice a year, and they would also meet that mentor in groups of students. One meeting, uh, one group meeting, and then one one to one meeting per semester. And so that person's kind of within the same school, but slightly disconnected from the teaching um, group that the students taking, and they would have a chance to share problems, questions, ideas during these meetings. So we're trying to also ask students to record their reflections of problems onto, onto the e-portfolio or personal learning, learning space or a, a vehicle for recording it. Um, so just as an example, and I'm slowly hinting as to which particular system we're using. Those of you who are uh, biased for and against different systems. Uh, this is, uh, can, can anyone tell what system this is? Pebble, yeah. This is Pebble, and we're using uh, Pebble Pan at Edinburgh. This is just an example. I'll, I'll be giving a few examples to make uh, some things that are words. Uh, a template that we built for our chemistry students going on placement. So it's a list of skills that are supposed to acquire during their placement. And yes, that had been articulated in the past in their guidebook, but it's so much nicer to have it as an interactive form, which gathers their levels of confidence. Uh, and if we're talking about a cohort of 50 or 100, we're able to have reports of these anonymous reports, obviously, as students respond to the and they would be asked to, to interact, to engage with this template at the beginning, throughout, and ideally at the end. Might help to write the final report as well. Just to take that snapshot, something which I was talking about, just to even have a chance to confront oneself with these, these questions. Uh, and why? That, that, again, going back to how do we convince students, it's I used four years, maybe degrees, eight four years, uh, but any number of years. So just making it different from some from, from a period of time that's just identical one, that just repeated four times, make it into a proper journey uh, during which students <coughs> constantly develop and they never move back um, and they never get that feeling of. Um, Repeating the same old thing uh, just a number of times as they return from their summer uh, holidays. In terms of pedal pad, uh, this is our main portfolio system that we use at uh, Edinburgh University, our main reflection recording vehicle. And this is just a list of screenshots that we took from Atlas, which is part of the pedal pad system. Also of the areas of the university which use it. Uh, we are still trying to engage with more and more students and more and more uh, programs and schools, uh, but 
On average, we're getting about 10,000 logins every month and about 1,500 submissions to level back to Atlas every every month. Uh, so there's, there's still quite a lot to do to ensure that we are um, covering even bigger parts of the university. But um, amongst the students, for those of you who can't sleep well, biomedical sciences, chemistry, education, law, business, social political science, physics. Medicine is our big project right now, because medicine are moving on to pedal uh, which is what they do is kind of natural. They always ask the students to reflect. Now, I will now focus on two, maybe three projects that we need bigger and diversity-wide, so not, not essentially linked purely to a single school, uh, in which I'm involved as well. Just as an example of the stuff that we do, the first one is um, Unfold. That's its name. Uh, and it is based on the personal tutor system. These students are seen as personal tutors, uh, then meeting up in groups as well, and just face to face dialogue, and do it for throughout the three or four years of their study. And there isn't much of a record of that, and the issues which they discussed at the first, during the first meeting um, is never recorded, so the student is not really able to see how much they are improving. Because as you as I gave you that first example of looking back at your holiday snapshots, it's also, if you look back, I use a different metaphor. You ever saw a mouse jumping up the stairs? It's just a stretch your imagination. Uh, if you think of the stairs and the mouse, so small, it keeps jumping up and up and up and up, so it feels like nothing really happens, nothing changes. Still the same. Whereas if it moves back, it will see how much of the steps it conquered. So <coughs> it's the same with our students. As they see and visit their personal tutors for the first time with of course choice problems, accommodation things, even trying to get used to Edinburgh altogether. Uh, and then still having that feeling all the time that I don't really keep growing. I'm still just the same me but by confronting these thoughts over time with their first encounters of the university, assuming they were recorded, get that sense of growth that that, that was a difference. And I have since then changed quite quite a lot. It's not, it's just I'm not realizing because I'm just busy day to day stuff and I'm always thinking that I'm not up to my strength standard. Uh, so that's what we're trying to do with Unfold. So students will be given a template and they are built into a workbook in Hebel Art. It's not like a, like a digital collection of this. With specific questions for a specific point of time. So this is our example from the School of Biology uh, for a very new student. Uh, just let me know what you're really good at. Just as you join the university, it's a good question to ask. Or to what extent do you consider yourself a scientist? These are very powerful questions because uh, some students, as you might guess, uh, apply for biology and don't consider themselves scientists. Uh, because actually they think that biology would enable them to become a Journalist, for example, that's related to that area, or work in business, that's related to research. Uh, um, or give an example of how you would do that in the before you came to the university. So trying to, to it's just a way of trying to suggest to students that feedback actually can be valuable, feedback is important, and you had been given it before, but you don't realize, but think about it hard. You come across something, so if you're aware of that, you'll be looking out for more feedback, hopefully, as you go through the university. So these are the sorts of things that students will pull out and then meet their personal tutor, discuss, maybe write some 
comments and say just stay there. He doesn't have to come back to it, but at some point he probably will. And the personal tutor can also use it to write references at the end, because as, you, as a personal tutor, you have 20, 30 students, you might not remember a specific individual and their issues in the past. So you can always go back to their workbook and look throughout the semester, throughout the <coughs> uh, answers, responses to these questions, and then get a sense of remind yourself to do it. Among the questions that we asked to unfold are these two, which are linked to graduate attributes, because University of uh, Edinburgh has got its own graduate attributes set, uh, split into four little clusters, so it's research inquiry, communication, personal interaction, autonomy, and personal effectiveness. And so the students are responding to specific graduates within these clusters, and, and what we can do then now, we're able to run reports on group answers to these specific skills. So, how confident are you at problem solving, with four being the highest, one the lowest level of confidence? It's those students say three. Why not four? Why not two? That gives you good material when you organize group meetings with the students to, to work with, because this is scientific evidence that <coughs> there is some progress to be made there. Or how, are, how good are you at how confident are you at absorbing information and concentrating for long periods of time? 57% of the students said two. Um, why? What, what can we do? How can we work with you? To, to improve that. So we're using these templates, reflective techniques, to also run uh, uh, surveys almost on, on how students feel the level of confidence at specific issues. We also ask students to, to engage with what I call invitations to reflection. And during the group meetings, we would, some of them are quite brave, uh, these Ideas. As you can see, so what is that all about? Well, uh, we're gathering a group of students and asking them to get a piece of paper and ask them to imagine if, for example, the BBC arrived here and wanted to make a documentary about you. Uh, what, would the, what would the title of that movie be? Uh, and the movie will be about, <laughs> about the time at the, obviously, mostly about your time here at the University of, of uh, And so the journey that you undertook over the last six months of the year, what would be the time? And uh, that gets students thinking, because it's, you need a title, you need a label. How do you be yourself? How do you be your journey? So, Try to encourage them or write down, uh, make that conversation with someone you admire about your struggles with the recent assignment or as you prepare for an exam. Or draw a map which will picture your journey and with all the obstacles and, uh, and ways to skip them uh, as geographical maps. Lane. So try to use that as a metaphor. Or describe the environment, your school, your classroom, the people you're meeting with. What, what, what are the things to which you pay attention? What are the things that you're not interested in at all? So trying to, to, to make them uh, reflect during these meetings. But it's, it's painful. This is for students. It's hard work. And, um, and just to give you an example from the School of Education, uh, this is a workbook for social studies students, 12 or 11 weeks, and week 5, week 7, week 9, these are assignments, assessed activities, but in between, reflective questions about lectures, about experiences in, uh, as they go to schools. Uh, so, every week you have to write 600 words 
about the week, the reflection, what and what happened. It is hard work. There's no you know, no denying, and that's why some students may not uh, may not like it. You know, because especially those who are not used to keeping a diary. But the the benefit later, in my opinion, are are worth it. Slicks. So spoken about uh, unfold. Slicks is another university-wide project that we're uh, that we're trying. To help. Unfold is not university-wide yet. We have to do pilot in three schools. Uh, but with, with Slicks, <laughs> this is a proper uh, university-wide um, project which is now piloted, and it's a framework which will allow each student to obviously invited to it or approved to do it, uh, to create their own experience and use that experience to gain credit. Okay, that experience, just to give you an example, a student, an art student, goes to an art gallery for a few weeks and is working on designing exhibitions. And before he gets there, he writes a proposal. Okay, uh, that proposal's approved. In that proposal, they set goals for them, educational, academic goals for themselves. They set uh, ways of evidencing them. And they also set the ways uh, during, uh, through which they will be gathering evidence to convince the assessors that actually that was a valuable educational experience. And they gained as much as they would have from a traditional academic course. But the student is in charge the learning objectives, scrutinizing them, and uh, convincing the academic mentors that they actually fulfilled them. Mm -hmm. So that's how it works. And the e-portfolio uh, mechanism is quite invaluable here, because this is the area through which that proposal is written. Then the, um, do I have an example? Yes. So that's a workbook template which the students who are creating these individual courses are using to come up with a proposal. They have all the guidance there. They keep their blog as well as they go through the experience itself. And once the uh, just uh, skip to once the experience is on its way uh, or ongoing or the end, the student will use Pebblehub to create a web portfolio to showcase uh, the whole experience of so the course with all the evidence linking to it and almost like a, a presentation of the work. So that's how we that's how we use it there. If I just uh, go back, I've spoken quite a lot about uh, different ideas uh, that, that we use, but there's no there's no denying that some of it is linked to what Pebblepad can do. And, uh, as you are using Pebblepad at Aberdeen as well, very quickly just a few few tips, well, few tips, just a few comments maybe. What I find really useful and to me the most unique um, aspect of Pebblepad are the workbooks because. There's nothing else like that elsewhere where you can create a resource which is private to an individual, but at the same time you have the control, ongoing control of, of the shape of that resource. So you can expand, you can stretch, you can add things. It's all the student needs to log in, they need to do is to log in and just, uh, and just look at what's there. And you work on the structure, to me that. Uh, that's quite unique and very attractive because your templates don't have to be perfect to start with because you can change them later and the student will always see the most up-to-date version. So uh, I think there's loads of potential for, for work, workbooks. Atlas, in terms of assessment, uh, double marking, triple marking, setting different levels, changing dates, splitting people into sets, different level of approvals, the different levels of approvals are uh, inviting externals without having to register them in the other systems. That's quite uh, 
that's quite attractive as well, I definitely think, is that our school of law is using Atlas for their traditional assignment, collecting files and learning them to turn the pen. Uh, our College of Medicine is, is doing some of that as well. Uh, it is quite powerful, so not only for reflection, but also for more mainstream things. Uh, uh, example of a web folio. Just, just a quick word about other areas uh, which are utilizing that sort of recording reflection approach. Edinburgh Award is our way of allowing students to do extracurricular things, volunteering, uh, engaging with initiatives which are not part of their program, and then have it validated as a as a, as a useful thing, a productive thing, and being added to their here. So we use, for some of these initiatives, we use Pebblepad to track how the students has arrived into the project, or a person volunteering in a student advice center, and then how they develop, what skills they gain, how much time they've spent, and the final uh, conclusion, and we use that as a way of determining students actually conclude. HDA is our local accreditation scheme for HEA fellowships. And so our academic colleagues are able to use a workbook uh, in, in Pebblepad to provide the documentation necessary, the necessary uh, reflective content. So you already see there's quite a few schemes which are asking people to, to reflect. It's just Stopping them and, uh, and suggesting maybe we can do it online because of the uh, ob obvious advantages, but also for the fact that it's sometimes somehow more sustainable. Other ideas I've mentioned assignments, self assessments. Wonderful example from our school of chemistry students are submitting their assignment file, and alongside that, they fill out the feedback form, which is identical to the form that will be used by their marker. It's just that student has to do it for themselves. And grade, comments, weaknesses, strengths, usual. And we're able to compare that against the uh, proper uh, feedback from the assessor later on. And we're able to also produce these nice pie charts and look at how whether students are under stating uh, their achievements are overestimated. Proposal forms for any research approval committees, any ethical bodies which are approving uh, proposals, use that workbook for that template and simply put a lot of flexibility there. We create portals as well so you can give students a web folio and ask them to edit that web folio collaboratively. That can be made public uh, so it's almost like giving a website to students uh, and to a group of students and asking them to, to work on that public engagement aspect of displaying knowledge as they learn. So that's all um, doable through any ePortfolio system, but that's the stuff that we do through, through Pebblepad. So it's not super linked to recording reflection, but still doable within the same area. So as you can see, to finish off, uh, it's that's why the, we build it, and they came, or they will come. Um, it doesn't work for e-portfolios because you have to tell people why they should come, and then start building it. Also, the other way around. But um, I will be happy to take any questions later. This is just uh, 30 minutes. You can't really cover much, and so I I apologize for any simplifications which I made about reflection. I know there's much more that can be uh, explained and um, covered, um, but just okay, enough time. But uh, it's been lovely to have a chance to speak to you. Cheers. Thank you.